Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be talking about glycine and N-acetylcysteine and how they can help slow down the aging process. Really excited to chat about this topic. Again, there's lots of little things you can do to help improve aging, improve health, and, and it's just it's nice to put a couple of these things in your toolbox so you can reap the benefits over decades to come. Uh, before we dive in here, please smash that like button. Really helps the search algorithm. And love to see your comments down below on the topic. All right, so let's dive in. I'm going to pull up some notes here, and we can we can chat about it here a bit. Okay, I'm going to try to pull this up. All right, so glycine and NAC, how they help with optimal health and reversing the aging process. So first thing out of the gate is what is glutathione? So glutathione is going to be essentially one of the raw material building blocks, or it's going to be one of the end results of cysteine metabolism. So cysteine is a tripeptide, or should I say glutathione is a tripeptide made up of cysteine, glutamine, and glycine. And so when we take cysteine or N-acetylcysteine, which is a derivative of cysteine, we're helping in, in essence to bump up glutathione, which is our master antioxidant. So glutathione, tripeptide, cysteine, glutamine, glycine. Um, cysteine tends to be the more rate limiting amino acid to bump up glutathione. And again, cysteine is going to be found in nuts and seeds and, and eggs and meat and things like that. And acetyl is just a an acetyl group attached to it, which helps with the absorption. Your body cleaves that N-acetyl off and then you're left with cysteine. You can also take cysteine as well and more than likely reap the benefits. You're just going to see it more in a supplemental form since the 60s or 70s when NAC was um, kind of created just for better absorption. So out of the gate, what is NAC do? Well, one, it's going to help improve glutathione, which helps protect tissues throughout the body. It's going to help regenerate your vitamin C and your vitamin E. So it's going to help you regenerate a lot of these nutrients. It's going to help with oxidative stress, right? Glutathione is a master antioxidant. And antioxidants, they essentially, oxidation is when you lose electrons. And so anti means it's going to be to prevent the loss of electrons. So it's going to have extra electrons that it can donate to stabilize cells that are missing electrons. Cells that miss electrons or don't have that good stability in the outer ring for their electrons, they're going to be more prone for oxidative stress and that can increase DNA damage. And so optimal aging, we want to have that good ability to balance out those electrons in the outer ring so we don't have oxidative stress. Now, glycine, we talked about NAC, that's going to be the N-acetylcysteine and the glutathione portion. Glycine is also going to be probably the second more important amino acid, right? So it's glutamine, glycine, cysteine. Glutamine is going to be common in meat in general. Glycine is going to be more common in the, the outer connective tissue of protein. You'll see it in obviously collagen peptides. Glycine is going to be the most important or the largest, most abundant amino acid there, followed by proline and hydroxyproline. You'll get it in bone broth. You'll get it eating the connective tissue. If you make um, like soups where you can get the knuckles out of the joints, that's going to give you a lot more glycine. Glycine has a lot of benefits. One, it's that second more important amino acid for the tripeptide glutathione. It is going to be involved in protein, nucleic acid, placenta, for the, growing a baby, right? Women, you want to avoid stretch marks when you get pregnant, really important. Get collagen, get bone broth in there. It's going to help with the placenta growth, also your, your skin growth. Connective tissue, it's going to help with all kinds of good stuff. Glycine is also really important for the enterocytes in the gut. Uh, helps build up those enterocytes. Excellent for building up that gut lining and decreasing the chance of leaky gut. A couple other things. Glutathione drops as we age, right? 20-year-olds have four times the amount of glutathione as an 80-year-old, which is pretty darn cool. I mean, right? If we can bump up our glutathione and match an 80-year-old, I mean, match a 20-year-old, that's going to have enormous benefits because we know aging – Part of aging is oxidative stress, that chronic loss of electrons. And again, inflammation plays a major role in oxidative st stress. So if we can essentially lower our oxidation levels by increasing our glutathione levels, and we can go from an 80-year-old to a 20-year-old, that's going to have major implications on our diets, on our lifestyle, on everything. And so it's really important. Simple things make a big difference. Now, inflammation depletes glutathione. So the more inflamed we are, junkie diet, processed foods, refined sugar, excess omega-6 fatty acids, trans fats, um, too little exercise or maybe too much, all those things play a role. Now, vegetarians and vegans have lower glutathione because glutathione is a tripeptide. Glutamine, glycine, and these are going to be amino acids that aren't going to be found super abundantly 
in plant-based products. Now you could probably take a plant-based protein powder and, and have some benefit reversing that. But again, animal products are going to be the ultimate source for that. Plus animal products have really good fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K, B12, iron. I mean, these are important nutrients. You know, you just don't get those nutrients in plant-based products. And if you do get amino acids, you get two to three times, or I should say 70 to 80% starch and carbohydrates. So it's very prone to a lot high, higher glucose and more insulin resistance, which again is going to drive more oxidative stress and is going to increase the need for glutathione. So really important on that front. And again, vegetarians and vegans have low glutathione when compared to omnivores in different studies, which is really important to, to see, right? Um, lower protein does have some benefits, right? Lower mTOR, right? That does have some good benefits, right? mTOR is this mammalian target of rapamycin, which is improved by um, going low calorie, keeping carbs down, and also protein. Again, typically mTOR gets knocked out or gets lower at about 40 grams of protein per meal. So I start my day with collagen, which I do that in my coffee with some butter, and that's going to be around 20 grams. So I keep it at that lower side. So one, I don't trigger mTOR. It's still, I'm, I'm kind of in this, you know, somewhat fasting state because I'm keeping carbs low and I'm keeping my protein low, but I'm still getting some amino acids from my body, which is going to help benefit energy, benefit hair loss, et cetera. Again, if we too, go too low calorie, too low protein overall, that will impact energy, muscle, and hair. So we want to have some benefit. That's why I love collagen peptides or collagen-based amino acids because you're getting the glycine. You're not getting a lot of... Um, let's say digestive distress because they're, everything's in peptide form. And again, you know, glycine is going to be the highest component, but you'll get hydroxyproline, proline, you'll get other really, really good nutrients um, from that as well, which is what I love. Now, mice in the glycine study, the mice study where they were given glycine and NAC, they had 24% longer life than the control group. So this is important. Now, again, I don't go all in on mice studies, right? You know, it was the, I think it was the, um, it was the, not the rat, maybe the rabbit or the hamster study where they fed a vegetarian based animal cholesterol. They had clogged arteries and they kind of essentially developed the cholesterol hypothesis from these different hamster or guinea pig studies, right? Or rabbit studies. So we don't want to jump all in, right? You have to look at different animals. Um, they respond differently to different foods. So you have to kind of take that in with a grain of salt. But this is powerful, right? Now you go look at human studies and you go look at the benefits of these things in humans. And I think you can kind of, um, use deductive reasoning and say, hey, yeah, there definitely is some benefit because there's a lot of benefit when you look at glutathione and, and collagen-based studies in humans. But this rat study or mouse study was very interesting. Now, 24% longer life, really cool. You're going to see an increase in mitochondrial function. That means improved energy, improved um, muscle density, improved libido typically, right? These are really important things out of the gate. Um, and then if we look here, decreased DNA damage as well in the older mice, same level as the younger mice. So the older mice that had the glycine and NAC had the same level of DNA damage as the younger mice, right? So we decrease those DNA damage with good antioxidant support. Now, again, we talked about glutathione, right? That's the tripeptide, right? Glycine and cysteine are the rate limiting ones. Cysteine first or N-acetylcysteine, we'll kind of use those interchangeably, and glycine second. Also, Glutamine and glycine, right, makes that glutathione compound that helps recycle vitamin C and vitamin E, which is another important antioxidant. So those two are also very important, especially vitamin E for vasculature, vitamin C as well for capillaries. And if we can recycle these better, this is going to be profoundly important for our um, aging self. So really important. So a couple things over here. Let me just see if I can pop over this study here. And I'll put this blog post here for you guys so you can see it. Those are really good ones. It was called Amino Acids and Peptides, The Secret to Longevity and Radiance. It was a Substack article where I got some of this information I wanted to share from you guys. So in this study here, they look at oxidative stress. These are the older mice in the 80s. Here are the younger mice, right? This is oxidative stress. And this is the old group plus giving the glycine and N-acetylcysteine. And you can see that massive reduction in oxidative stress. And again, oxidation is a loss of electrons, right? You lose electrons, that outer ring is unstable, and then it's more prone to free radical stress, which damages the DNA. So remember, the older mice went on the glycine and NAC had equal level of DNA damage as the younger mice. So really, really important. Let me just keep on rolling here with you guys. 
So this is the study here, which is very interesting on oxidative stress. And this looks at mitochondrial function here. Check this out. So here's the younger ones. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells. These are the older ones. So we see that decrease in mitochondrial function by 50%. And then here we are up back into that 80 to 90% level. So mitochondria is very important for energy, very important for muscle mass, super important here. And then inflammation, right? So we have the younger group has less inflammation, older group has more inflammation. And then given the glycine and NAC, guess what? Big drop in inflammation. And if you go back over here and we look, remember, glutathione goes down with inflammation. Why? Because the more inflamed you are, the more catabolic you become. And the more catabolic you become, you break down amino acids for fuel. And part of those amino acids will be the same ones that are used to make glutathione. Very important. Also, endothelial function. This is important. Integrity of blood vessels, right? This is very important because the biggest killer is going to be cardiovascular health, right? Strokes, heart attacks, cardiovascular disease, right? Older, guess what? Endothelial function, right? Higher is a bad number. Lower is better. So we have less inflammation in the vasculature when you're young, more when you get older. And then when you take NAC and glycine, guess what? Big drop. So that's really nice to see. And again, this is looking at DNA damage here as well. Higher DNA damage, lower when you're younger. And then when you're older with the glycine and NAC, big drop. So nice to see that. Insulin resistance as well. So powerful here. Again, insulin resistance causes a lot of oxidative stress. Uh, again, um, the, the what the mechanism is, I mean, it, I, I would think it's just the oxidative stress. Now, I would say that if you took this group here and you made diet changes, while also supplementing, guess what? I think you'd have even supercharged results. I think you may be able to bring these results back to parity with the young group, which is pretty cool. And again, this is looking at cognition. So we're talking about younger, higher cognition, older, lower cognition, giving the NAC and glycine. Oh, guess what? Increased cognition, which is great. And we know that insulin resistance is a, is a big role because guess what? This is the biggest drop. 600 down to what? Like... 250, I and mean, that's a huge drop. We know insulin resistance plays a major role. Most cognitive issues in dementia and Alzheimer's are considered like type 3 diabetes. And we know the insulin degrading enzyme plays a major role in recycling plaque in the brain, whether it's uh, beta or tau plaques in the brain. Now, can that insulin degrading enzyme can also be degrading insulin. So if you have lots of insulin there, it will use itself up dealing with the insulin problem and not dealing with the plaque. So we want to have more of its resources going to the plaque and the cleaning of the brain and less going to the carbohydrate problem. So hope that makes sense there. Good questions though, out of gates. And then out of the gates here, cognition, again, physical stuff. This makes sense, right? More physical, more physicality because of the mitochondrial function, right? makes a big difference on the mitochondrial function. And then outside of that here, is there anything else I want? I think those are the big things I wanted to comment out of the gate. So what does that look like for me? So supplement for me out of the gate. Good article. I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can find that. But my um, take on it is this. I do about 20 grams of collagen per day. I do about two to three scoops. I take my true collagen, which is a collagen peptide, good quality grass-fed meat. I get 20 grams a day. That's going to give me a good head start with connective tissue, with aging, with mitochondria. I take about two grams or 2,000 milligrams of NAC a day. And I'll take a little bit of added S-acetylglutathione, about 200 milligrams on top of that. You know, As I get older, I want to be committed with good, simple habits that can help with oxidative stress, with mitochondria, with you know, reducing that aging process. And I kind of showed here some of the studies and in that article, there'll be the actual scientific links. It's my study. So take it with a grain of salt, right? But I think it's simple, easy things that you can apply to your life. NAC does not cost that much. Collagen does not cost that much. You can make it and put it in your coffee like I do. So it becomes almost like a meal replacement. So I'll do 20 grams in my coffee, about 16 to 20 ounces of coffee. I'll put about a tablespoon of butter in there. I'll add some Madagascar vanilla in there, some MCT, blend it up. The MCTs are powerful because those fatty acids are going to be good brain fuel and they'll be very stabilizing for blood sugar and appetite, which is great. So hope that makes sense for you guys. So I'll add 20 grams of collagen per day. I'll add about 2,000 2, milligrams to 2 grams of NAC. And I will add a little bit of N-stream glutathione, about 200 milligrams of acetylated glutathione. Again, you could do reduce, you could do liposomal, so there's other brands out there. Someone talked about a trisomal so that will have, you know, typically the reduced, the acetylated, and the liposomal in there. Again, I'm a big fan of giving the actual building blocks to make it because your body's going to be the best um, packager and manufacturer of that. Plus, it can deliver it and make it throughout the body. When you take something in, you know, where does it get used? Does it get used right away, right? So that's the weird thing, right? You don't know how it's getting used, how it's getting transported. So I like the ability to actually make it endogenously in the body versus 
only giving it exogenously. So some exogenous fine, right? But still rely on the endogenous building blocks. And again, if you're vegan, vegetarian, definitely knock that off. Try to get some animal products in there because you're going to see you don't quite get the same level of glutathione when compared to omnivores. And we know glutathione and its connection with oxidative stress and mitochondria function and aging, that data is pretty strong. So definitely get some animal products in there, whether it's some fish, whether it's some egg yolks, something like that's going to be a good first step in the right direction. All right, guys, if you want to dive in deeper, again, we'll put links down below here. If you want to reach out to myself, Dr. J, for functional medicine support worldwide, if you want to dive in, schedule a consult, links down below for my team below. And if you guys enjoy the content, please give me a thumbs up. Please share. It lets me know that you guys are watching and you are enjoying the content. Let me see if I can answer some of your questions, y'all. Okay. All right, Grace writes in, can we get enough glutathione or NAC from food or is this something we have to take exogenously? I mean, I would say in these studies, this is not going to be from food. This is supplemental. So again, assuming you're getting grass-fed meat, assuming you're getting collagen or bone broth and you're eating really good protein in each meal and diet and digestion and stress is dialed in, it may be okay. The difference is we live in a pretty toxic world. So inflammation, stress, exposure to Roundup, glyphosate, pesticides, atrazine in the water supply, I think in today's day and age, we're getting exposed to too, with too many toxins and it's not worth thinking that we're going to be okay. Now, if you're doing a great job with air filtration and filtering out your water and eating unbelievable animal products, you could probably get away with it. But I think the average person, you want an insurance policy. There's that 10, 20% of exposure that you just don't know where it's coming from because we're inundated with toxins. And so I think it's a good insurance policy for anyone to put in there just to be on the safe side. Better safe than sorry. Good question though. Dennis writes in, what's a good alternative to trisomal glutathione? Unfortunately, it's not available in Canada. I'll put some links down below. My staff will take care of it tonight here when they when they check in. We'll get some NAC links from my favorite NAC products and I'll put a good acetylated glutathione that does come with one gram of glutathione, one gram of NAC as well. So it'll have 200 milligrams of acetylated glutathione plus one gram or 1,000 milligrams of n you know, Put that link down below, so check in soon on that one. That'll be in there. Trisomal is good. That's going to be your reduced liposomal and acetylated. Again, your NAC, NAC is going to be your best out of the gate, cheapest, most cost-effective, and then pick a path. You know, you want to go acetylated. I just like that one. Did on that one's pretty good as well. But you can't go wrong with reduced. I'll do reduced in a nebulizer if I need it, or um, I'll do liposomal if someone doesn't like pills. That way it comes in a liquid form. Good questions, guys. Okay. Does collagen have to be taken with vitamin C for better bioavailability? So vitamin C is important in that collagen matrix. So again, make sure you're eating fruits and vegetables and those kind of things. If you're taking some vitamin C in a multi, that's great. That's awesome. If you have like additional wound healing, like you have scar tissue or connective tissue problems, you would be good to take some extra vitamin C along with it because that's an important nutrient in the collagen matrix. But again, if you're eating good fruits and vegetables and good leafy greens um, and you don't have any specific acute issues, I think you're going to be okay without that. Most people are taking a good multi anyway that'll give you a half a milligram or a half a half a gram, 500 milligrams or so. And then also, you know, you can take some supplemental on top of that if you need. I'll do like an L-ascorbate or I'll do a vitamin C synergy in my line with bioflavonoids is great as well. But again, for today's data, again, vitamin C does get recycled better when you increase glutathione, right? So glycine and NAC are going to help you recycle that vitamin C. So that's pretty powerful. So you can improve your vitamin C needs. You can lessen them because you're recycling it better with the improved glutathione. So that's powerful. Okay, Dennis writes in here. Is the glucose ketone index a reliable way to check the health of your mitochondria? I mean, I'm not sure the glucose ketone index. I mean, it'll give it to you in some of these meters. Like when you go on, for instance, um, Keto Mojo, when you log in, you can see that. I just look at the numbers. Again, my biggest thing for that, it's looking at your ketones, 0.5 to 1 millimole or so, and then it's comparing it to your blood sugar. And I think it's just creating a index based on that. My whole thinking is this. Show me your meal, right? Where are you at fasting? Are you in the 90s? Are you in the 80s? And then where are you at an hour, two hours, three hours afterwards? If you keep it below 120 to 130 in that first hour and you're back below 100 an hour, two or three, then you're in pretty good shape. That gives me a pretty good indirect measurement that you're not insulin resistant. You're not overshooting up your glucose. 
And then you can always add in the fasting insulin as well to see where you're at. And then you can see how you're doing with your ketones. You can get a keto meter like the Keto Mojo does blood sugar and, and ketones. And you can see how you in that one millimole or so. You're getting close to that. So it's a good option for you as well. Question for you. Uh, it's developed by Dr. Thomas Seafree that measures your, yeah, exactly. So kind of what I just talked about there. So I gave you guys a good idea of a couple things to think about. So in essence, you know, aging gracefully, it's going to involve one, foundationally having a solid diet, a whole food type of a paleo-ish template, meat, vegetables, some fruits, some starch, ideally keeping gluten, inflammatory foods, excess, refined, processed omega-6 down, and um, trans fats and processed flours and sugars down. And again, the healthier you are, the more adaptive you can be. So you could throw some of that in there every now and then, you'd be okay, unless you're really gluten sensitive or, or even celiac, because you got to be careful with that. And then outside of that, you're dialing in your hydration, you're dialing in your electrolytes, you have good gut function, you're not taking antibiotics, you have a good healthy microbiome balance. If you're not sure, get your gut tested, get your hormones tested, get your micronutrients tested, and then you can fine tune your health with lifestyle hacks, good sleep, and supplementation. And again, you have a handful of levers to work on your aging and performance. So start with the foundational ones, and then you can work up from there and get more nuance after that. All right, guys, enjoy today's video. Please let me know, share with, with family and friends, comments below. And if you want to dive in and get more support with myself and team, there'll be my coordinates down below where you can reach out directly and schedule. All right, guys, take care. Have an awesome day.